welcome to the video presentation on emergency handling and first aid. This video covers first aid to be provided to victims of electrical accidents or any other accident. I am J.K. Sharma and I will tell you what you should do in case a person's heart or breathing stops. As you have seen, CPR is a method to save such a person. We first need to check the response of a person without becoming tense. First, call out to the patient. If the person is responding, then we can relax. If the patient is not responding, we need to check the cardiovascular pulse of the person. If the pulse is available, then the patient's heart is working. If no pulse is available, it means that the heart is not working. We need to provide chest compressions. We need to follow the ribcage. The heart lies where the ribcage ends, two fingers above. It is here that we need to give the chest compression. We should interlock our fingers and apply the palm of the hand on the heart area. While giving compression, we should see the face of the patient to check for movement or signs of return of heartbeat. We should keep our elbows straight and apply direct pressure over the heart. After giving compression, we need to check the breathing of the patient. If the chest starts rising, it means that the patient is breathing. If the chest is not rising, we need to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. We can use a piece of cloth or a mask if it is available with us. Let me demonstrate how to use a mask. For artificial respiration, we need to cover the entire mouth of the patient. Then, we should raise the chin of the patient. Raising the chin is important because the foot pipe and windpipe are both together. The wind should go into the windpipe. We should first inhale fully and then give the air to the patient. Our lungs expand like a balloon on inhaling. After inhaling, you need to push air into the patient's mouth. After giving air twice, we need to check the chest of the patient. Keep in mind that chest compression and mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation should not be done together. Both activities are exclusive. We should keep doing chest compression or mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation until the patient's heart starts beating or medical aid arrives. Now, you have understood how to handle such emergencies. An important aspect in first aid is the first aid box. We generally observe that either we do not keep a first aid box or we do not find it on time. Even if we find it, many items that we do not need for first aid will be in it. Sometimes it may not contain anything at all. First aid is given by a common person. We assume that he may lack three things during emergencies. They are necessary items, time and knowledge. When we do not have the specialized knowledge, we should keep only such items in the first aid box, which do not lead to problems. It does not matter if there are less or more items than necessary, but we should not have items that may lead to problems or danger. Let us first talk about the size of the first aid box. What should be its size and shape? The shape can be as per our convenience. Where shall the first aid box be placed? In the car, in the workplace, at home or in the factory? Based on the head count in the workplace, we can decide on the size of the box. Let us look at the contents that should be kept in the first aid box. The contents are divided into four main categories. First, let us know about the implements or tools that should be kept in the box. The next category is the medicines. We need to have local application medicines, which are applied on the body, and oral medicines, which are given orally to the patient. The next category is that of items of dressing, the types of bandages that should be kept in the first aid box. Coming to implements, 
we should keep a pair of scissors when applying a bandage if we do not have a pair of scissors to cut the bandage we are helpless the second implement is forceps this is to remove something embedded in the skin often we use forceps to hold things like sterile bandage we might use forceps to take bandage from the box to minimize contamination the next tool is the pieces of bamboo stick used for creating wooden stick buds another tool is a safety pin used to secure the bandage a bandage can be secured in three ways either by using a safety pin or by using adhesive plaster or by tying a knot if we have a safety pin it saves a lot of time the next tool is a measuring cup for either giving water or medicine to the patient suppose we need to give some water or soda mint to the patient we do not have anything in which we can mix it what do we do hence based on the size of the first aid box we can keep a measuring cup in it the next item is the face mask to avoid possible infections this is required for ourselves as well as for the patient hence we should always keep a face mask in the first aid box the next thing to keep in the first aid box is gloves gloves are important more so when we are treating a patient who is bleeding we should avoid blood to blood contact for the danger of hiv infection hence whenever we are trying to control bleeding of a patient we should always use gloves coming to medicines we have several limitations for stocking medicines we usually stock detol or savlon for first aid if we stock detol we have to ensure that it is always diluted before use we can never use concentrated detol to dilute detol we need to take a cup of water add 3 to 4 drops of detol to make it a milky solution we better use savlon as there is no need to dilute it we can directly use it you can even dilute savlon if required we can have spirit ammonia to be used for helping an unconscious person to recover salt ammonia is also available for this purpose avoid using chappal shoe onion and so on for inhaling we need to have rubbing gel to be used for internal muscular injuries initially we used iodex which left stains on clothes now there are various gels for pain relief from internal muscular injury next let us look at oral applications the medicines that we take orally we may have as many medicines as possible however the truth about first aid is that it is always given without medicines we should not give oral pills during first aid because we may not get the correct medicine at that time also we may not have knowledge about the suitable medicine and how to give it medicines like aspirin or dispirin are given during heart attacks but they can cause many side effects we always need to play safe so keep soda mint tablets or sweet soda that gives relief from acidity stomach upset and so on even if two or more tablets are given it won't harm the individual we need to have salt and sugar to prepare ors solution in case of vomiting we add one pinch of salt and one pinch of sugar to a glass of water and give it to the person this can be given in case of shock as well this can even replace glucose solution now comes the important part of first aid dressing first we need to have a roller bandage this is called a roller bandage it comes in different sizes from half inch to 6 inches depending on the place and part where it is to be used you may keep this as per the assorted number like 2 3 and 4 in the first aid box we also need to keep triangular bandage which is called ramban patti the jack of all bandages this is because we can use it on small as well as big wounds 
One square meter of cloth or 30 by 80 centimeters is cut into two pieces diagonally. We can use it in four different ways. We can use as open bandage, folded bandage, where we fold it at the base, two folded or broad bandage. We can make the broad bandage into roller bandage. This is further folded to make it a small bandage or a narrow bandage. We use narrow bandage for fractures or head injuries and for sleeves, cuff and collar. We can use a reef knot to secure the bandage. It is not very difficult. The use of reef knot helps to tighten or loosen it easily. It is not a hard knot, so it will not press into the body of the patient. Pull one end to tighten the knot. Pull out to loosen it and pull out completely to open the knot. Hence, it is important to stock triangular bandage. If we stock three to four triangular bandages, we can combine them and use them for rescue if required. The next item is the sterile bandages. These are ready-made bandages available in different sizes. We can open the pack and pull out the bandage using a twig, cut it as per requirement and put back the rest. It is medicated and sterile, hence it can be used directly on wounds. The next item is crepe bandage. This is also called garam patti. It is used for muscular injuries or pain in joints like knees, ankles, elbows and so on. This is available in different sizes and can be stocked in the first aid box. The next item is cotton roll. Always ensure that cotton roll is stored in a sealed package so that it does not get contaminated. Cotton is used when we need to pad a wound while bandaging so that it absorbs the swelling. The next item is the sterile gauze. This can be used for either dressing a wound or as a bandage. It can be used as dressing to cover a wound or to keep the dressing in place. The next item is adhesive plaster. These days, adhesive is available as micro tape, which is safe. The earlier version of tapes would lose its stickiness within a short time. Another problem was that it would leave a mark when it was removed from the skin. Hence, micro tape is used now. It covers less space and is easy to use. It can be cut and used to secure bandage. There are also some ready-made bandages like Band-Aid, which can be stored in adequate quantity. There are also eye pads for eye injuries, which are readily available in the market. Ensure that they are always stored in a sealed package so that they are not contaminated. These things can be stored in a first aid box. Ensure that the first aid box is of adequate size, white in color, with clear markings of a red cross mark on all sides. This is to help anyone to identify it easily, even among several other boxes. Everyone should be able to identify the first aid box from any direction and pick it up when it is urgently required. We need to keep checking the box from time to time to replenish any items and replace the contaminated, spoilt or expired items. This is very important. It is recommended that a first aid box should be available in places where people are working.